Then blessings, my Afrocentric home decor and style channel. This is Lisa Marie Goodson. And for those that are new, welcome to the channel. For those that's been around, thank you for being here again. So you saw the title, it's Afrocentricity, a brief lesson or a brief history of Afrocentricity. And I don't know if I'm necessarily giving history of Afrocentricity, but also I, I wanted to just kind of give an idea of why Afrocentricity for me, how it became, how it came about. People, you say you like me to actually, some say they love the actual idea of not just showing you items, but also connecting it and teaching. And so, yeah, since I was as young as I could remember, I always loved everything that was, um, everything in a sense, African, right? And this is why I want to teach you about the difference between African, so to speak, and Afrocentricity. Everything African. I loved African masks, African drums. And my mother would like read my mother would read these wonderful books by like one by John Hope Franklin from Slavery to Freedom or Ivan Van Sertima, they came before Columbus, or the black book that showed the atrocities of black people in America through slavery and picture form and you know documents or but also we would celebrate beautiful arts and even designers. My mother, there was a, I don't know if you're familiar with a brother, his name is Willie Smith. He actually is passed. He died in the 80s around the during the AIDS epidemic time. And actually his sister is Tukey Smith. She actually was a longtime companion of Robert De Niro, but he had a company called Willie Wear. And Willie Wear was uh, a black designer doing his thing. I mean, now we have other black designers, but he was really kind of in the forefront. A brother, I believe was from Harlem, New York. So we always, this idea of Afrocentricity, this idea of using our experience, having our experience in America, and in my case, Afrocentricity came through America, but connecting Africa through the diaspora of black people, whether that was Caribbean culture. I remember every weekend we would go, or lots of weekends, we would go to Prospect Park in Brooklyn. My mother would take us as children, and we would listen to, at that point, it was the Rastas drumming. Uh, but we also listened to, we lived in a neighborhood where uh, the Puerto Ricans would actually come out and play. We called them the bongos then, and so that was a way of kind of bringing Africa into our home as well. So even Latin culture, Latina culture, Black Latina or Latino culture as well was all part of our lives as, as a child. And um, but the books and the masks and ourselves, my mother telling us that we were beautiful and, we're, and our complexion was beautiful and really brought up our esteem. So Afrocentricity is about really elevating yourself as a black person, elevating, bringing your esteem up because everything in a lot of ways tells you that you're not good enough, you're too dark or your hair's nappy, you have no history, you have no culture. And once I started understanding that we did have a culture, actually the first culture, and very old and ancient, the oldest and ancient culture, it just made sense to me that things of the African is beautiful. So let me tell you why I love these items right here and why I think they really bring home Afrocentricity. So kente cloth is a cloth made, woven, created by Africans. But today we could actually wear the different styles of kente cloth and I'll show you. We could actually wear kente cloth not just on ourselves as just not just wearing the actual fabric maybe slung across our our shoulders or even but now we can wear it in our clothes in capes <laughs> in dusters but we could also wear it on our bags so this is a way to say i am proud of my african culture but also understanding that i'm also an american society and how can i blend the two together because i'm so much of the two-ness the Tunis. The Tunis is a term coined by W.E.B. Du Bois in his uh, book, Souls of Black Folks. And, you know, he talks about the idea of the color line and that, you know, in, in this the Tunis theory is that, you know, we are always kind of reconciling our African heritage to our American experience. And I feel like this Afrocentricity really brings in the Tunis without having to reconcile in a, in a way that is reconciliatorial so in other words it's it's a way that combines the two and it's okay that it's who we are and it's an expression of where we are and so it's okay and so that's why i really love these bags y'all so this is the kente print and so yeah we're using it in the bag and i tell you it has the matching wallet that goes inside and i think it's just stunning i want to show you something about cloth a lot of times when we're looking at african fabric 
we're thinking that we see the same thing. Kente comes in many different prints. And we're thinking like, oh, y'all might look at these two bags and say, well, they're exactly alike. But in actuality, I want to show you some differences. And these are like the subtleties that your eye will, that will, that will delight your eye, I say in a lot of ways. Something about a bag or something Afrocentric, and you think, well, that's the same one I saw. And then you go, no, something about this one. I want you to look in the inside of this and notice that it's a lot of green in here. And then I, don't want, to, I want you to look here. They are actually different. And then look here. So let's put let's see if I can do side by side. So we have this and we have this. Two different inserts on the sides. Two different patterns. These are one of these bags. So if you anybody interested, Africa7beauty.com, they are on the site right now. Excuse me, and they're $50 a piece. Absolutely wonderful. The idea, this is why y'all, y'all know I'm so attracted to uh, baskets. Let's talk about it. Up there, all the baskets that I get. Because baskets was something that always reminded me of Africa, whether it was the baskets that the women wear, wore or held on their heads as they carried good, you know, fruits, vegetables, foods, clothing, what have you, on their heads to and fro from one place to another on the continent, different countries in Africa on the continent. In a sense, we, we, don't, we won't necessarily probably will see ourselves in the States walking down the street with an African basket on our head, but we can actually use those elements of the basket in our decor and also in our decor, our body as decor. So in our, in our accessories and our bags. So that's why I just love that. And this idea of the, the circle, very much of a African concept. This is why in many African countries, particularly in more ancient times, because modern times you do modern things. And so they also Africa has their old Africa and new Africa as well. So they're kind of diasporic in, in a sense. But this idea of sitting at a table, especially or sitting in a circle, it was very common for many people in different African countries to sit at a table and have and eat their food, or sit, I'm sorry, sit on the floor even, or sit low to the ground and have a piece of fabric out and have their bowls laid out and would eat with their hands. They would eat with their right hand, never their left, because their left hand in many cultures is what you do to, you know, kind of wipe yourself after using the bathroom. So always your right, a way of sharing, of connecting. And so this idea of circular, this is like you're bringing in us Afrocentricity, is really in everything. So this is not just fashion, but it's actually culture. And culture is about building esteem and feeling good about who and what you are and where you come from. So these two bags are left. I'll show you those pictures as well, because we're going to definitely talk about drumming. What I love about these clutch bags, again, the perfect combination of bringing together the idea of Africa and America, or Africa and England, right? Or London, or Europe, right? Or Africa and different Latin American countries, right? The idea, this is woven, this is hand-woven work. Look at the intricacy on this beautiful, and the colors. I love this idea of we are very colorful people. It must be make sense that if you're going to have black skin, you want something that's going to that's gonna pop on it. So Africans naturally knew about this thing they call fashion now. In a lot of ways, we understood that our bodies were canvases and that we could decorate it and colors were something that looked good on us. So these clutches are $50 a piece, but they're also hand woven. I just want you to see the detail and the intricacy. Another thing I want to show you is again, we have this tote bag. Let me show you this tote bag. Let me show you why I want to show you something that I noticed, right? Uh, thank you, T.R. Robinson. I appreciate that. Let me tell you about this tote bag and what I noticed and what I love. Okay, besides it's a divine tote bag, again, hand woven. Let's see the back. It goes all the way around, so back and forth. But check this out, y'all. Look at this right here. This is what we're doing at home. I mean, this could, uh, no, actually, this one could go, but I was actually thinking, arguably, maybe not so. This could actually be a set. Look at the same, it's the same, this is purple. It might not be showing up as purple. This is a purple, and then there's the purple there. There's the red, the yellow, the blues, the green. This could be a matching set. I mean, how lovely is that? So both of those, $50 for the clutch and $50 for the tote, just showing you, I think they're really outstanding bags. But also, if again, it shows the world without saying a word. 
That's what's so good about accessories and clothing and even your home. Everyone's not going to be invited to your home when you walk down the street. But isn't it nice? And I'm going to say this to sisters. If there's young women watching, I really hope that you're listening. But even some of us older Gs, older, old original goddesses, OGs, I call them original goddesses, we can learn something from this. Don't you want a man to know who you are? In a lot of ways, when we embrace our natural hair, we're saying, look, this is what you're going to get every single day. But when you walk down the street and you wear something of African or Afrocentric, believe me, every brother, I don't care if he's from the hood or he's from the ivory tower or ivy towers or the, you know, highly educated or not to say if he's from the hood, he's not educated. Because this is what I want to tell you. I think he is. Everybody recognizes Africa. And when you walk down the street or walk in the community, the brothers will say, how are you, my Nubian queen? Or the other brothers, maybe that's working in, you know, in, in corporation, if you will, will say, how you doing, my beautiful sister? Or sister, how are you? See, it really brings to people a kind of respect. Because nobody, I mean, I've seen it in the hood. You go down walking down the street looking any way or looking like everybody else, they might mistake you and they'll know you a queen. But when you walk down the street with your clutch bag, when you walk down the street with your bag, they're going to respect you in a way that they have not before. And I don't care what they got inside of them or where they're coming from. Something about this is like your shield. It's your power. Give thanks, T. Cole. Yes, very true. Thank you, T. And I appreciate you. I'm so glad your daughter. So I need her to listen. Hey, baby girl, daughter. This is your power. This is your power. That's right. It commands, thank you, Maya. It commands respect. And I'm about to, I get emotional because this has happened in my life. There's neighborhoods you'll be able to walk through. There's situations you'll be able to walk through when you wear this. It is a shield. It is your protection. It is your, it is your divinity. It is your femininity. It represents. So it's when you purchase anything from Africa 7 Beauty, my afro Central Boutique, you're purchasing a part of yourself. This is not something else that you're going to get sick of, you're going to wish you didn't buy, you're going to throw in the closet later. How, another thing, we got to talk about idea of investment. Yeah, when we think of investment, we do think of appreciation, that something will gain value over a period of time. But there's actually, thank you, TNR, it's timeless. Yes, darling. But in actuality, this is an investment too. Because if I pay $50, but I can use it forever, and then my daughter one day will go through her mother's closet. When I, just, when I you know, meet the ancestors, and she will say, hey, your people, where did you get that purse from? My mother. And her daughter, where did you get that purse from? My grandmother. That's the kind of stuff. So you can actually make more of an investment out of your accessories, your clothing, your home decor, if you look at it as, in a sense, an heirloom, something passed down from generation to generation, because they really do stand the test of time. So that's something that I learned. Like, my husband and I talk about it all the time. I said, my daughter's going to get my clothes, my, my good stuff. My daughter's going to get my purses. My daughter's, my grandkids are going to get it. Like, I, I don't look at this as some junk you throw in the closet and then you never look at it. Even if you put it in the closet, you're going to preserve it, and it's going to be there, and it's going to stand the test of time. So love this. So this bag is $50 as well. Yes, that's right. That's right, darling. Go ahead. Yes, Maya. And these clutches are also $50, okay, lady? So this is what I, and this is everything I'm showing you is on the site. This is what I have left. Now, I'm going to go to the bed, but don't look at the bed for a second. Let me tell you about the dashiki. That was, if, if, okay, let's talk about how Afrocentric kind of centricity grew. Afrocentricity came as a resurgence in a way for black people, particularly, again, I'm talking about from America, but actually it was all over the country. The Black Panther Party for Self-Defense and other movements influenced this idea of for us, by us. This idea of we love ourselves, we demand respect, we want better education, we want African programs taught in the school. The actual term Afrocentricity or Afrocentric was coined by Molifi Asante. He was a professor at Temple University for many years. I'm not sure if he is anymore. He actually coined the, coined the term, and it's actually Africa in the center of our lives. So we started saying loud, I'm black and proud. James Brown made this amazing song. We started knowing who and what we were, and we wanted to express that. So one of these, I remember I was too young, but I remember being around my Afro puffs, 
but my mom was very much part of a movement. My mom was had Black Panther Party friends. She was part of all kinds of coalitions and movements. And so the one thing I remember is the brothers coming to us, thank you, T. Cole, coming to our house and the sisters with their dashikis. The dashiki, I think, I, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm sure it, it is in many parts of Africa, but I remember Nigeria being one of the places that really brought that, night, that dashiki home and every brother that, that, that was proud and black had to have their dashiki. And so it's nice to see the resurgence of the dashiki, but look how we're doing it. We're making the old new again, right? It's the whole modern thing, having a dashiki bag. So look, it, even, it still looks like the shirt, but you're wearing it now on, in a tote. This tote is $50 and it has the little foot. I love that. I think that is so cool. And it's a beautiful bag. $50 for the bag. It's the dashiki and it's dope. <laughs> it's really dope. So I love that. And uh, let me sh show y'all. Now, y'all, I don't know what it is. I actually put this on me. I love these Kente, again, print. Kente print. Thank you, TNR Robinson. Now, let me tell you about this Kente print. Why? Look at these bags. I want to see if you'll notice. I'm not going to, I'm going to see. I'm just going to ask this question. Are they different or are they the same? Are they different, these two bags, or are they the same? If you notice, the patterns are different. That's what's so wonderful about Afrocentricity is that, yes, they're different. Exactly. They're absolutely different. They're different. They're two forms of Kente, but they're different. And what I love about these are actually the backpacks, y'all. I t told my husband, I said, I actually want, I want to keep one for myself. He said, girl, you better go on and sell it. That's right, T. Outlaw, they're different. Exactly. He said, you better, that's right. And, and, don't they, and they mean different things, too, exactly. Like, I can't tell you each print what it means, but like I said, some will denote the, or describe the king or the queen of that community or their status as the wife or the prince or, so, or their status in royalty. So a lot of times the, the, you wore a different or particular print. Some is going through family lineage only, and only those people from that lineage wear that particular kente. So what a beautiful thing. I mean, like our clothes was not nothing. <laughs> nothing we wore was for nothing. Because if you wear something that has no spiritual significance, you lose your power. That's what's so wonderful about Afrocentricity, that everything I'm wearing, every design, every pattern, it has a meaning to it. And so it makes you stand taller. You have meaning to yourself. Sometimes I think that's the vibrational frequency that people are feeling, whether they know it or not, that this person is meaningful, this person is worthy, this person knows who they are. People love that. I only have these, so these, these two bags you see, they are on the Africa 7 Beauty site. And these are the only two I have left. I can get more. I took them all from my vendor. So there's no, but I'm, I'm, we got more on order. And there's other patterns besides the Kente that I want to show you. He showed me the other day and I was like, hey, but I'm going to get one of these. I'm, I'm going to order one just for me. I put it on with my, I have my jeans on. Even I have a, a black dress on. I mean, this is a great carry-on. Like, you know, going to the airport, for me, I always have, you know, my carry-on. So the, this is how you get away with it, because you know how they say, so you, you can bring on a carry-on that's you know, has to fit into that little bolt basket thing, and then you can bring in one personal item. So for me, and they including your purse as a woman, what I can do is you can actually put your purse in the backpack and still fill the backpack up with snacks. I like to have my own snacks when I travel on the plane, but you can also roll up a blanket, a travel pillow, and also your personal stuff. I keep my charger, my glasses case, those things that I wanna reach, and my lipstick, I keep those with me. I think this is a great travel bag. When you're in the country and you're walking around, an excellent travel bag. Absolutely love. They're both $50, $50 a piece, and I think it is a great buy. So those are exactly what's left. Everything you see under there, it's been sold already. The dashiki thing, the other clutches, all those are sold. So I'm going to get those out actually today. But I want to show y'all something else because this is something that I think when most people think of Africa, and rightfully so, I don't think it's anything wrong with it, they think of the drums. So what if you, in our house, my husband and I, we don't, oh, I gotta, I'll tell you about the cards too. My husband and I, we don't have, we had some drums, but they were 
uh, Congo, or Kungas, as they call them, Kungas, which is still of African, you know, from uh, the drum is from Africa. Let's, let's go back. <laughs> the drum is from Africa, period. Drumming and dancing, the key Swahili word is in Goma. In Goma means to both drum and dance because in most places in, in Africa, they are one, to drum and to dance. You don't watch drumming, you dance to it. Well, in a sense, I say, what if you don't have drums or at this point maybe can't invest in a drum prices or they got some great prices for drums? You could actually bring the drum into your home through pictures. So guess what? Those, all those canvases I showed you last week, y'all, they, some, one queen, how you doing? My Rose, uh, you know who you are, Hosanna. How you doing, darling? She bought Rosa, Rosanna, excuse me. She bought every, all of them. She bought all four. My queen from Canada, she bought all four. So I had to go get two more because I couldn't have nothing on, this, on the uh, website. She bought them before they got on the website. Some people know me, so they'll email me. They'll Facebook message me and say, hey, I saw that. Put it to the side. I want it. If you ever feel that, you can do that as well. So I got two more. And Spirit said, when I pick two, y'all, it's spiritual. I don't walk in there and grab the first thing. I think about what, I, what you would want or I ask Spirit what item would be good for them. Your home, you can have drums in your home without actually having physical drums in your home. And you can do it through a canvas. This canvas is $60. It is original art, hand-painted. These canvases are from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, beautiful people, beautiful music, love me some music. I'm going to definitely make sure I start telling you about different music that I listen to. There's a brother named Oliver, they, they, his, they, his last name, they just uh, brought it down to Tuku. Oliver Tuku, brother from Zimbabwe, his music is absolutely amazing. Love him. You would love him too. So I'm definitely going to put you on some great music. I don't sell CDs at this point, but I know that one day I will. But either way, I'm going to put you on anyway. This is a beautiful piece. The drum, I mean, look at this. And so they're all, so this one on the back says African drummers. It's a beautiful piece of canvas. Somebody said you can go to a Home Depot and they can stretch it onto the wood for you. And you'll have a beautiful piece of art. And this one, I can see more the lighting. I love it. It's called Drummer. I, let me tell you, why did I choose this? The color, that red, is stunning, and the movement of that drummer is just magnificent to me. So I love this one, and I believe this one says, as you see, African Drummer as well. It is canvas. Is that stunning? $60. So the drum, let's talk about the drum. One thing that anybody that hears the drum will know is that it is very powerful. Hey, Belinda King, Belinda, your bag and your batik is going out. Belinda bought the other batik, not this one, and it's going out today. Belinda, thank you for all your, your, uh, your patronage. Just thank you so much. Wonderful human being. I feel your vibe, and I love you, girl. So the drum. Let's talk a little bit about the drum. So the drum was a, what, what did we use the drum from? Besides ngoma, besides drumming and dancing, we used it to send messages. So this was a way we didn't have the text thing, right? Or, you know, you couldn't call nobody up on the phone. So you sent messages through the drums. The message could be, there's somebody, there's a death, there's danger ahead. Or you would use it for celebration, like weddings, but also funerals. The drum was also a way, like I said, they have, they have something called the talking drum. You hold it in your arm and you press down on the drum. So they call it the talking drum. And it allows, again, it was, it was sending messages through the drum. Well, I'll tell you, as we came from Africa, we, we did not let go of the drum, although the slave master understood that the drum, that we were sending messages. Thank God for the few places like Congo Square in New Orleans, Louisiana, that actually allowed the enslaved African to play the drum, and which really keeps our, our music, our culture, our spirituality our, alive. Thank, you're very welcome. So the drum was taken away from us. It's the, the slave master cl clearly knew that it was riling us up. It helped us to remember, and it was also, yes, sending us messages. But see, we just turned it into something else. That hand bone, that slapping your body and your legs to make sound, that's drumming. That shouting, that stomping. Even we brought it into the, the church. We brought it into the Protestant belief system, the Catholics. In our own way, we, we took it and made it something else. So we definitely kept our drums 
even when the young kids came out in the 80s, when rap came out, late 70s, 80s, and they started really, really loving the drum machine. And even though it's a machine, the, actual, the idea of the call for Africa was real. Yes, that's right, exactly, that's right. We start dancing, don't you? Don't you hear drums? Have you ever been walking or going in the park? Oh, I got chills because I think about it. You hear drums, you be like, I hear some drums. And you sit to your girl, be like, I hear some drums, girl. Be like, yeah, I hear some drums too. Where those drums coming from? The drums, baby. The drums can calm you, heal you. When my daughter had a naming ceremony, we had when she was born, we get we did a naming ceremony for her. Well, actually, it was a I'll tell you about that whole beautiful story. The drum is in our soul. Yes, Belinda, it's in our soul. That's absolutely right. And we had a naming ceremony, and of course, and to, to bring a child in or to bring an ancestor out, um, a, a, a elder out and back into the world of the ancestors, drumming is so important. So I love these batiks. So I, I just want to tell you my thought process. I picked these out because I know somebody needs some drums in their house, and this is a great way to do it. $60 for the canvas. This is my last one. Belinda actually bought the other one, the woman, of course, the warrior. Now, when we think of warrior, a lot of times this society will make you think of almost it as something kind of violent. But I want you to look at warrior as protection. So a lot of these symbols, I, I'm going to start bringing your statues, uh, figurines, all kinds of decor for your home. But this is one way for $15 to get it, and it's still the same thing. It's a protective mechanism. So any place, front doors are great for this. But even in the room, anywhere where you feel like you want that protection to shield yourself. And also, though, it talks about, it really says where I come from. So every design, every color will say that, oh, this is this tribe, or these are these people, or this is from this clan. So even, again, our yellow, our reds, and our oranges, the green background, nature, we are always presenting ourselves of who we are without speaking a word. Okay, you want to buy him also? Okay, I'll put him aside, because I think they do go together, Belinda. So I think that's a great idea. So Belinda's going to get that. Belinda, I'll put that aside. So y'all, that's not available. And... But I'll definitely get you all some more. So those are prints, and I'll get more. You can actually frame it. It's beautiful. It's going to look so good. What I'm going to start doing is showing y'all some of the stuff. I'm, I went to one uh, Home Depot yesterday to protect this. Like, that's right, Belinda. That's what I'm thinking, Queen. That's what I'm thinking. So, yeah. So I went to Home Depot because I wanted to find out if they stretched the canvas like my sister told me. This particular one didn't, but I don't think she understood what I was talking about. So I'm going to go to another one. And I'm gonna have, I'm gonna get one to have the canvas stretch so you can see how it looks and I can find out how much it is for y'all and everything. I wanna make it real easy, but yeah. And lastly is, so Afrocentricity, this is what started happening. So we had Afrocentristic, Afrocentricity, um, everything. We had Afrocentric everything. So we started Afrocentric hats that we wore scarves around our neck. If you see graduations, if you notice in graduations, they actually do a lot of the cummerbunds now, or even getting married, you notice there's African cummerbunds for the men to wear around their waist, or African, like the scarves around the neck that you see a lot of universities wear. Even the preachers in the African Episcopal churches, in the African Methodist churches, and all the churches in general, a lot of them, they wear kente cloth scarves around their neck, or African print scarves around their neck. So we, we're doing it. We are representing ourselves and everybody knows the Kufis, like the, what the brother got on now, these wonderful Afrocentric. And even though like the idea of even Islam, which is, you know, very much uh, Arabic kind of religion, and some may argue, but we Afrocentric that as well. So I'm selling these cards. Why these cards are special? Sometimes you've seen cards be $2.50, $3.50. My cards are, I'm selling a whole 10 set for $25, but they're all completely different. These are on the website. It's so wonderful to know somebody's birthday's coming. You ain't got to go buy a card because you got 10. You can have a birthday for that person. Oh, somebody else's birthday, give it to that person. And again, it's saying something about yourself. Believe me that this card is artwork. And what you can do is actually frame the card. And I'm going to walk down the hall and show you how I did that with my husband's prints. You can do the same thing with the card. So if you don't give them away, you can actually frame them. But whatever you do, they're beautiful, they're wonderful, and actually I love them. So those two card sets are available. It's two, it's each set has a set of 10, and they're stunning. Go on Africa 7 Beauty, and you will see it. But let me give you some of these ideas of things that you can do with prints or cards or whatever you want. I'm on the thing, baby. Or whatever you... 
Oh, that's okay. All right, so the, the smoke alarm is going off. That's what my daughter's worried about. So you know what? She's right. Let me go see what that's about. But these are prints that actually uh, were my husband's prints. And I took them and I put them in some Dollar Tree frames. And that's how I made that happen. So I'll keep bringing this stuff to you. A lot of good things are coming for the channel. But I just wanted to give you a little brief kind of introduction. And y'all, I must say this. I say this a lot. You will be so, people will come into your home and just be like, oh my gosh, that's all I can say. Oh my gosh. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening. Anything you saw you want, just get in touch with me. Go to the website and buy it. Actually, go to the website and buy it. And so Belinda, uh, Belinda's going to get this. So Belinda, actually, if you want, I can invoice you. Or if you want to just go to the website right now, you can get it because it's still on there. So Belinda, one, either one, let me know. And everyone else, I want to say thank you so much. I love y'all. I'm going to put this back neat. That's why I need a three-bedroom. I need a room for the boutique. I really do. All right, ladies. Oh, okay. I'll invoice you, darling. No problem. All right. So I'm sorry I didn't get the messages. Hey, Lisa. Hope you have a great day. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you for what you do for the culture. Thank you, TNR Robinson. Alpha and Omega. Peace, love, and soundness to all to you, too. Hey, T. Cole. Me and my daughter want... want Want everything. I laugh out loud. We live it. Great video. Oh, I say, yes, ma'am. TNR, very true. Yes, yes. Afrocentric clothing always commands respect. Yes, Maya. It's timeless. Yes, TNR Robinson. So true. I have some items I'm always asked about. They were passed down. See, I love that. Definitely Kenyan items I got from family. Is that beautiful? People, people know the difference. Oh, thank you, T. Cole. You are such a treasure to us. We learned so much from you. Thank you so much very very much so tnr robinson says beautiful pieces thank you different yes they are different yes they are and they mean different things yes that yes it is thank you belinda you're welcome that is why we hear the eight oh eight eight right eight eight and we start dancing that's right the drum is our soul yes i'm going to buy him also good okay good i got that for you I would like to ask you about African coming of age ceremonies. My daughter's turning 13 and I want to do something special. I will do a video on it because we did that for my daughter and I would love to help you do one as well. So I'll do a video and everybody can join and share into that as well. All right, ladies, let me go tend to see why the smoke alarm is going off outside, not in our apartment, in the hallway. And let me find out if they know that this is happening. All right, ladies, love you all with all my heart, Africa7Beauty.com. Anything that's there is available, so go get it. Except for that, I'm going to take that off and enjoy, ladies. Love you. This is, oh, yeah, you'll see me on camera next because I got to make, I'm, I'm going to make those uh, cleaning products for you all as well. Love you so much. This is Lisa Marie Goodson of the Afrocentric Home Decor and Style channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace and blessings.